In the final years of the 18th century, a young boy receives the world's first vaccine. A Frenchman found the Rosetta Stone. And in northwestern China, a man is getting a workout. It's the product of this workout that will be the topic of today's video in which we continue our journey from the oldest Chinese noodle to a modern bowl of ramen. The road to ramen. After having looked at medieval noodles last time, this week we turn to noodles from the late 18th century. Did they originate there and then? Well, that's a good question. But first, let's explain to the uninitiated what Lanzhou Lamian actually are. Lanzhou Lamian are famous noodles from, well, Lanzhou in northwest China. It's an extremely popular noodle dish in and outside the Chinese speaking world. But you probably knew about them because of the way they are made. These noodles aren't cut, they're pulled. Nice try. The pulling of Lanzhou noodles is a bit more involved. It might seem daunting and impossible now, but we'll get through it. Yes, you too can make pulled noodles. It's an understatement to say that the origins of Lanzhou Lamian are obscure and the subject of much debate. Some traditions place the origin with the Hue people over 1,500 years ago. Others say that the famous noodles have only been around since 1915. We think the truth is somewhere in the middle, a bit more nuanced. Some form of pulled noodle in beef broth has probably been around for centuries. However, we doubt it would have been very recognizable. The theoretical origin that we like and are going to use as a premise for this video is 1799. This was, according to the story, the year in which Chen Wei Jing thought Ma Liu Tzu the recipe which had been handed down through his family for generations. Chen Wei Jing had landed a well-paying job as a civil servant, so he handed the family recipe to his poorer friend Ma Liu Tzu to help him set up a business. Ma Liu Tzu, now armed with a top recipe for beef noodles, left his native Huang Kui... Huang Kui... Get the lady. Huai Qing Fu. Ma Liu Tzu brought the noodles from there to Lanzhou, where they've become a staple of the city ever since. It were the successors of Ma Liu Tzu and Chen Wei Jing who went on to establish the five rules of Lanzhou Lamian. The Lamian from this tradition must contain a number of colors. We're going to do these countdown style. The fifth element is the clear stock, which we've done in this video. Then there's Si Wang, referring to the yellow color of the noodles. Don't worry, we'll get to those. Sambai, the white of the daikon radish. Erlu, the green of the coriander. And finally, Yi Hong, the red of the chili oil. Yes, chilies. The story of Lanzhou Lamian is also the story of chilies in Chinese cuisine. Chilies came to China in the 15th century via Portuguese traders who got them from the New World. The chilies proved popular, but initially not for their taste, but for their color. Therefore, in the richer coastal areas, chilies were used as a novelty to give food a red color, an auspicious symbol in Chinese culture, for which they only needed small amounts. However, in the poorer regions, like Lanzhou, they were a massive hit. Salt was prohibitively expensive in northwestern China. So the chilies, which can grow pretty much everywhere, and thanks to their capsaicin, keep for a very long time when dried, were eagerly adopted as a flavoring to compensate for the lack of salt. In the 19th and 20th century, and especially during the Cultural Revolution, chilies went on to become a staple of Chinese cuisine. But we now know they started as a salt replacement for the poor. So for our Lanzhou Lamian, we are going to make chili oil. First, take a handful of dried chilies and chop them up roughly. Then add them to a mortar along with some lightly toasted sesame seeds. Give this all a good grind. We want them to be nicely crushed, but there is no need to pulverize them. Place your crushed sesame and chili in a bowl, ideally one that you are not too attached to. If you've got a chipped one, this is where they shine. Now put that bowl in a shatterproof bigger bowl. It will become clear later why we are doing this. Take half a liter of rapeseed oil and add in some spring onion, a bay leaf and a star anise. All these aromatics are optional. And if you want the authentic pauper oil, you would leave them out. They make it a lot better though. We're going to get this oil ripping hot just below smoke point. 
If you want to be sure you can use a thermometer, between 160 and 180 degrees Celsius, you're good to go. Carefully fish out the aromatics, or if you have a lid like ours, just pour your oil straight over the crushed chili and sesame seeds. See why we needed that shatterproof bowl? Now, let this cool all the way down to room temperature and then store it in a sealable container. We keep ours in the fridge and it easily lasts a month. Now if that's ready, we have to get to it. Come on now, just follow the instructions and all will be well. We need to make the lamian, the noodles. Lamian literally translates to stretched noodle. Now, there are ample types of stretched noodles in Chinese cuisine. From very simple ones like biang biang noodles, to extremely advanced types like the dragon beard, where the act of pulling them is an attraction on its own. We are going to make the classic lamian noodles because of two reasons. Firstly, there's a theory that ramen get their name from lamian. We will deal with this when we actually get to ramen. Secondly, these noodles, like ramen, contain an additive. We'll get to that later in this video. But we're going to start with the very basic beginnings, the dough. We are using a method from a YouTube channel called Peter Pulse Noodles. If you want to have a serious stab at doing this, we strongly recommend that channel. Link in the description. We are first making a single person portion. So we're taking 250 grams of plain flour. Our protein level is 10.5%, which we think works perfectly. To this, we add about two grams of salt. Lastly, we're adding about 165 grams or milliliters of tap water. Mix all of this and then cover with a damp cloth and wait for three hours. You can also wrap this in cling film, but they did not have that in 1799. What about these additives? Well, we first want to show you that you can do it without any additives. This is probably how the first noodles of this sort were made, through the technique of over kneading. You can get the dough into a super stretchy state by simply stretching and folding. This will get all the gluten in the same direction, allowing us to stretch the dough. Admittedly, this did take us over an hour of working the dough. Apparently, you can skip this by using a stand mixer for half an hour, but it's 1799 and there are no stand mixers either. Also, you need to pull and boil these noodles as soon as they are ready. If you let this dough rest, it will go stiff again. Don't worry about that pulling technique, we'll get to that, as we're not using these. This was mainly to show how unwieldy this is without any additives. And even if we were to use these, it would be wrong. They're just too white. As we know from the five rules, the noodles need to be yellow, which we are going to achieve by adding something blue, Peng Wei. Originally, this was the ash of a mugwood plant that grows on the plains of northwestern China. These days, the actual ash isn't used anymore since this is a very popular noodle and the plant is rather rare. So, this synthetic replacement was developed, but it should yield the exact same result. For full authenticity, we would have to go to China, burn a bush and smuggle out the ash. But that's a bit out of budget, so we're going to use this type. Once you open the bag, store it in an airtight container, as this stuff reacts with the smallest amounts of moisture in the air. And it also stinks. We're making a fresh dough. We already add a tiny pinch of the Peng Wei to the flour. Apart from that, we are making the dough with the exact same proportions as we did the last one. When kneading it, you will notice it's already a lot more supple and a lot more yellow. Once it comes together, we're going to prepare some Peng Wei water which is one part Peng Wei and about four to five parts water. You'll notice it gets this typical grey-blue U. Add a little bit onto our dough and knead it in. It doesn't really show up on camera, but this dough is very yellow. You can actually see it change colour when we add on the Peng Wei water. We're doing a few more stretch and folds like we did with the first dough, but unlike that one, this shouldn't take an hour. This should be done in 10 minutes, if not faster. When stretching your dough, it is important to quickly switch between tension and relaxation. If you're struggling, just act like an Italian stereotype. Come on, try it. See? Easy. There is a problem though. A lot of recipes and videos will tell you that you cannot get Peng Wei outside of China. That isn't entirely true. We got ours for about 12 to 13 pounds and it took three weeks to get here. But we appreciate this might be too big an obstacle for some people. But there is another solution. Anyone who has ever made ramen will immediately think they know the answer. All the types of alkali. You know, the baking soda, the kansui, the potash. We are telling you now, don't. No, stop it. 
Come on now, put those away. It's true that Peng Wei contains alkali. And it's this alkali that causes the yellow color of the dough. But it also contains a bunch of other things like all of this. Some of these are dough relaxers. And we will see in the next episode that just adding alkali actually achieves the opposite, making dough really stiff and practically unpullable. So if you can't import the Peng Wei and baking soda won't do the trick, what can you do? Use nutritional yeast. Yes, the cheese for vegans, available in most supermarkets these days, contains a dough relaxant and, in addition, will provide the noodles with the required yellow colour. We're making the exact same dough as before, but this time we're mixing in 20 grams of crushed nutritional yeast into our flour. Then, once kneaded, sprinkle on some extra yeast and knead this in with some extra water until you can no longer see any orange specks. Repeat this until the dough feels very loose and stretchy. Practice makes perfect here. As with the previous methods, once the dough is ready, we have to pull noodles. And since this is our for real attempt, we need to have everything ready. Our coriander needs to be chopped, our daikon sliced, and the beef shin we recovered from the stock making in part one needs to be cut up and put back in our stock to warm up along with it. Now have your spider, sieve, stock and boiling water at the ready. You should also have flour and a dough cutter ready on your workbench. After about 10 minutes of stretching and folding, your dough should be stretchy enough. When you fold the dough in half and you can bounce it back to full length with two bounces, your dough is ready to go. If stretchy but still a little bit too sticky, feel free to very lightly oil your dough or hands. Now flour your surface but be aware. If you mess up after flouring, you will need to add fresh water and stretch and fold the dough a few times again, as the ratios will be messed up a bit. Take your dough and roll it out like this. Now comes the tricky part. This is where people often fail because the process is very daunting and many will have the urge to pull slow and careful. Fight this urge. To do this properly, you have to yank them quick and then let them rest on the bench. Lanjo Lamian are known for having an aggressive technique. Hard yank, rest. Hard to them pull, rest. Hard pull, rest. Hard to them pull, rest again. When they are back to the length of the original sausage you started with, it is time to fold them. Hook the loop of your noodles over the tip of your middle fingers. Now pull up the knot in your hand to avoid the weak spot. Put your finger in the middle of the loop, tension the noodles and repeat the process. Do this five times in total. Well, until you think they're thin enough. When filming this, our human got a bit excited after four pulls, so we only did four. They're a bit thicker, but they're fine. When done, cut off the messy knot ball thing, shake off the excess flour and throw them straight into the boiling water. Give it a quick stir with the spider and after about 30 seconds to a minute, they'll be ready. Take them out and tip them into a sieve, then shock them under cold running water. This keeps them from overcooking and allows you to grab them with your hands. Put them in your bowl and ladle over some of the stock we made in the previous video. Add the meat, slices of daikon, the green coriander and finally some spoonfuls of our chili oil. And there you go, you just made one of the most popular types of traditional Chinese noodles. And a very difficult type at that. It is said to fully master this process takes 10 years of study and practice. So we think we did alright. We have to admit, this was by far the hardest dish we've ever made on this channel. And it took us hours of practice to get to this level. But practice does pay off, because right after turning off the cameras, our human pulled a perfect batch with some leftover dough. He has since made this for dinner a couple of times, without too much pain. For those of you who really want to do this, we recommend checking out Peter's videos and at least consider getting the Peng Wei imported. The nutritional yeast is healthier, easier to obtain and smells a lot better, but the results are not as consistent as with the real thing. For those who persevere, the results are amazing though. We really like these noodles and we have no issue understanding why these noodles have been popular for over 200 years. We hope you enjoyed this video on Lanjo Lamian. If you liked this video, please leave a like or a comment down below. If you're new here, it would be great if you could subscribe. All of these things really help us out. In the next episode, we will be turning to the Cantonese rising bamboo noodles. And yes, we got a bamboo. Thank you very much for watching.